If you do have to guess a multiple choice answer, don't just pick B, instead choose I have worked through a huge number of multiple choice questions recently, and in this video I just want to show you the approach that I would take if I had any questions like this coming up in an exam. Now this really stems from some work I did with Physics and Math Tutor. I saw that they had questions broken down by topic, and although this is great when you're revising, it does mean that if you look at a multiple choice question mark scheme, it just says A, B, C or D, it doesn't explain how you get to that answer. So in collaboration with Physics and Maths Tutor, we basically put these answers, these work solutions together, and you can find these over on the website. Now, this is the kind of thing that we're talking about. This question here uh, is an A-level physics one. Um, it's got A, B, C or D, it's got some different numbers, all of which could be a possible answer to this. Now, my approach for questions like this, and actually of the 192 pages of multiple choice questions I worked through, where there may be two or three questions per page, so that's maybe 500 questions. Questions like this came up all the time. There is no secret to this. You just need to understand and know the subject. So although it might be a multiple choice question, there's no particular technique. What I would do is I wouldn't even look at the answers first of all. Instead, I would concentrate on the question. Uh, so this one is about energy levels in a hydrogen atom. Uh, the electron makes this transition shown. What is the wavelength? Now, even though it's multiple choice, I would still say you need to write down an appropriate equation. Here, we can maybe look at how the energy is related to the frequency, or indeed the energy is equal to hc over lambda. Okay, so we know the energy uh, from the question, or we can look at the change in energy. Uh, we know the value of Planck's constant, we know the speed of light, and therefore we can use this to work out the wavelength. So, even though nobody's ever gonna mark this work, you still need to start out, I feel, by just doing the basic physics that you've been taught many, many times. Write down the equation, show you're working out, and if you do that, you will then get a number, which you can then check with the answers over here, rather than being swayed by what the answer is before you've calculated it. So for these questions, that's not really any particular technique, you just need to understand the subject that you're being assessed on. Now the other type of question is one's a bit like this, where you might have many options. Now, of course, it's tempting to think, well, um, I'm gonna just guess that. But if you're not sure, rather than just having a guess where you maybe might be 25% correct, think about getting rid of things that you know are definitely not correct. Now, for example, looking at this, and again, this is an A-level physics example, but whichever topic you might have coming up, you will know things are definitely wrong. Um, the same SI base units, well, force, is measured in newtons, and strain is dimensionless. So I don't even need to think about the base units in this one, I just need to think about what's definitely incorrect. Uh, force and stress, well stress is force over area, so it can't be those. Uh, strain and upthrust, well strain has no units, and upthrust uh, is a force, so it's measured in newtons. So just by working through these one by one, and getting rid of the things that I know are definitely wrong, I'm much more likely to get to the right answer. And that means maybe in the exam, uh, you can just strike through or put a big cross by the ones which you know are definitely incorrect. And then if it's a question you're not sure about, rather than it being a one in four chance of being correct, it's maybe just one in two. Now, I still feel that there's not one particular technique that you need. I definitely found with students in the past that the students who tend to have a better understanding of the subject, who, who are better at the longer answer questions, are also the ones who get more marks on the multiple choice questions as well. I don't think there's any particular technique, you just need to know the subject. The one bit of technique I would talk about though is maybe thinking about your time management. Some multiple choice questions are easy and you can do them in maybe 20, 30 seconds. Other ones are a little bit more complicated and you could end up spending three or four minutes on those, which isn't really worth it if there's only one or two marks available. Now, if you found when you've been doing practice papers that you spend too long doing multiple choice questions, then think about doing those after the long answer questions in your exam, because you don't have to do all the questions in order, or at the very least, do a quick whiz through the multiple choice questions at the beginning. And so any that you think are gonna take a while to complete, leave it and come back to it at the end. There's nothing worse than getting great marks on the multiple choice questions and then not having enough time for your longer written answers and the explanations in the second part of that paper. The other thing is that uh, a lot of students think, well, all I need to do is uh, guess B, because that might be the correct answer. 
Well, what I actually did was my own little mini survey of the multiple choice questions that I did. So here we go, a bit of a pie chart. Um, what I found was, was that A, the answer A was correct about 23% of the time. Uh, answer B was correct about 23%, I think it was. Uh, and then we had answers C and D. I actually found that um, the most popular answer in those particular AQA questions I did happened to be C, which was correct 28% of the time. Now, it doesn't really actually have any impact on what's going to happen in the future. Um, if, you're, if you want to guess B, that's fine. If you don't know, then maybe go for C, that's absolutely fine. But I would say before you start guessing with a one in four chance, just go through the answers, get rid of the ones which you definitely think are wrong. And that means it's not a 25% chance of guessing the correct answer. Instead, it's maybe a 50% chance. However, that will not be you because all you need to make sure that you do as you're doing your final bit of revision is just think about the subject that you're revising. The best way to get really good at multiple choice questions is just to have a good understanding of the subject and then treat them like any other question. Write down the equation, show you're working out, and if you know there's definitely answers which are incorrect, just get rid of those when you're making your selection. Anyway, hope that helps. And uh, if you are an A-level physics student, although the answers I did for PMT were AQA specific, I'd say 90% of that content is going to be useful for anybody. So if you are an OCR or an Edexcel student or WJC or any other exam board, you can still go to the AQA page and you can find these questions, which you can use as another source of revision as you're preparing for your exams. Anyway, um, hope that helps. Thank you very much.